Welcome, uh, Tokun, Andre, Caitlin. You're all good. Good, thank you, sir. Can't complain. Can't complain at all. It's I think Wednesday, right? But despite uh, it depends how you look at it. That could also be Thursday. Because tomorrow is yep. Friday, because Friday is a holiday. Tomorrow's yeah. Thursday, don't yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. <laughs> should we keep it on Thursday tomorrow? And then and then take Friday off. Or should we treat, should we treat Thursday tomorrow as a Friday? Because Friday is actually okay. Are Saturday. you saying are you saying we can take Friday off? Say again, Andre? Can we take Friday off? Um, yes, I think let's. You've done well this term a semester Thank so you. far, and I think uh, let's take Friday off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> On one condition that you have yeah. to obviously um, capture some footage of um, your bri activities that you um, are going to engage in on Friday, because oh, yeah, um, bri day. it is bri day. It, it, you have to bri on a bri day. Well. No, no. <laughs> When um, a number of years ago, um, when I had a much bigger house and, 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 and a bigger plot, and obviously now I've, I've downscaled and I'm actually um, quite enjoying it, as a matter of fact. But um, I couldn't understand my next door neighbor were looking over the over the vibrant wall every evening. I said, Are you brining again? I said, why, why not? Uh, it's, a, it's a way of preparing food. Um, our ancestors have been doing it for many, many years. The cavemen did it. I mean, geez, really? Um, because there's obviously that that um, that um, impression that every time you bry, you're gonna care. You know, you know. But to me, brying is just another way, and I believe one of the better ways of preparing food. But anyway, um, I don't bry every evening anymore. But there's absolutely no reason for us not to um, at least. If you're not into brying, at least do it on Friday, the 24th of September every year. Oh, well, on the 24th, it's not a Friday every year, but on the 24th of September. Celebrate our heritage. Um, and I decided, uh, I looked at the timetable, and then I thought, you know what? Hmm. We are, we leave, we, we, because of the changes, um, on of the new timetable, the fact that we now have a double back-to-back -back period now, as opposed to um, one now and one we had on on Mondays, um, that clashed with that um, for that Monday session that clashed with um, the other module. I will not see you on Friday. Period there. I will not see you on Monday because we don't have class on Monday. I will only see you again next Wednesday. Which um, made me realize that maybe I'm going to not start any new work. That's the other reason um, for checking the time pool. I saw that we are very well on track to, um, to achieve what we have to achieve by the end of the semester. Um, and I thought that, you know what, <clears throat> there's 10 chapters that you have to prepare for your term test, which is next Friday, the 1st of October. Okay, so let's rather, because we actually lose two periods um, on Friday, let's start with revision. I'll gradually, today, I've, um, I've done th three chapters. Um, the chapters are shorter than others. Um, and We can finish it off with um, with two chapters each, and you should be ready for your term test next Friday. So, yeah, if everybody is in um, agreement with that, uh, yeah. you'll see on the screen I've brought up what the test is about and what um, the format looks like, and we're going to start the discussion with this. Andre, you had a question. There is. Um... A class test tomorrow. There's a class test tomorrow. Yes. Okay. What can you tell me? What is it about? Which chapters or is it you one to three? You completely stumped me. Um, I checked it this morning. Or I wanted to check it this morning, and then I went into um, into into marking mode again because I'm grading supplementary um, um, like exams. Okay. Um, that um, needs to go um, to. 
um, the people in high authority so they can actually have a look at it and approve it and then make it available to the students. I'm not sure what the process is there and how long it's going to take. But yeah. um, they gave us three days to, to market after the supplementary has been written. I had three groups of students, who, um, a group, um, of, of three different modules who wrote supplementary on Monday. Um, so I think I did very well to actually get through all of those supplementaries and I've completed everything um, this morning. Um, and that sort of, uh, in the back of my mind, I said, oh, geez, uh, I see on the timetable there's a class test on tomorrow. Um, and then I forgot. What I will do is I will make <laughs> sure that um, that um, I can I, I can quickly have a look at it just between, between today's sessions. In the break, I'll quickly have a look at it, okay? And then I can confirm. But um, I know that um, class test three is, is, is uh, will be available the whole of tomorrow yeah. um, for you to complete. Um, but you, exact yeah, chapters, you, I'll just confirm the chapters during the break. Yeah, okay? if you can just guide us, otherwise we have to learn, we're learning the whole textbook and just, yeah. Sure. Thanks, Jan. No Good. problem whatsoever. I just want to quickly... Is it an easy one? Say again? Is it an easy one? All my tests are easy. <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Anybody? Seriously, you think my tests are reasonable? You have the nicest classes. You have the nicest classes, but I, I don't think your tests. I don't think your tests are the easiest. But you do have. Um, you do give the nicest classes. The, 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 the test can't be easy. Otherwise, it's it's no preparation for your. For your formal test and for your supplementary, I want you to um, to to um, to breathe those. <laughs> That's why I'm preparing you now. It's like preparing. Oh my goodness! I, I've just with a side note here reminded myself we're playing the all guys on Saturday. Oh, enough pain. Um, the fact is, you have to prepare hard if you expect a hard test. So. But I don't think my tests are hard. My class tests are fine, man. It's, I can't obviously control how much you prepare. Because that's one of the influences. No, 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 no. You can't blame it. us. You can't blame <laughs> us. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, I'll, con I'll confirm the, the, the chapters during the break. But um, Thanks, man. Uh, about the formal test, the one that carries 30% of your, um, of your um, formal mark, Okay, um, sixty percent. Sorry, my apologies. Your class test, the one, the two that you've written and you've done yeah. well in those. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Um, the one you're doing tomorrow, and then one final one that you'll do um, after the formal test and uh, between the formal test and your exam. Um, that would be um, the fourth one. All four together counts ten percent towards your formal mark. Um, the assignment that you have done, and I haven't started marking um, because I prioritized the, the supplementary exams. Um, that, but I will do it before um, before the weekend. Don't worry, you'll get your feedback next week already. Um, uh, you'll get your feedback before the before the test. Okay, so um, uh, that's thirty percent, and then the test that you're writing next Friday, the one that you have on the screen, that's sixty percent of your formal mark. That's ten, thirty, sixty. That's how that is um, 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 formulated. Right, the test that you write next week is on the first 10 chapters, chapters one to 10. Okay. It's multiple choice. There are true and false questions. Um, there are short answer questions. Um, and they are obviously questions, all short answer questions related to the case study. <clears throat> right. The test again would be like you did in the first semester. It's open book. It is, however, timed. So you will write it. You have two hours to complete it, and you can do it anytime. On Friday next week. Classes resume as normal. There will be a normal timetable. There's no, this is not an exam period where there's no classes. So the normal timetable will continue throughout next week. The first 
and test already is on Monday for other groups. So there will be tests throughout the next two weeks, um, formal tests. Yours is next Friday. Uh, it's available the whole of Friday. If you're an early riser, you can do it um, um, early in the morning. Uh, but you have till um, 12 o'clock in the evening on Friday, the 1st of October, to complete it. Do not start after 10 o'clock at night because you will steal your own time because you will get timed out. It runs for two hours. You can decide what, which two hours next Friday suit you best. Okay. I sort of expected some of you would do that during our normal Friday sessions that we have scheduled class. Okay. So, um, I will, but we can discuss them, them that next Friday, um, uh, next Thursday, sorry, in our final session. Um, it's 100 marks. It's 25 questions. But remember, people, on Canvas, every single multiple choice and every single true and false question is a separate question. That's why it's 25. It's not 25 questions or four marks each to get to 100. Okay. Um, any questions related to um, what you see on the screen? That, that, uh, just to give you clarity, you know when it is, you know what format it is, you know when it's available to you, you know how much time you have to do it, and you know what chapters is covered. That's on the screen. Are we all cool with that? Darwin, are you on your surfboard on your on your on your um, mobile next to the beach or what? It's a nice beach day in Cape Town for those who are wondering. How's the weather down in George, Caitlin? It's good, sir. It is a bit chilly and breezy and cold and also a bit of rain earlier this week, right? Up to yesterday. Yeah, it's George. Uh, of course, yes. I forgot. CAW, cold and wet, yes. I'm used to it, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you're hanging in there. Um, you're quite happy with all the answers I gave you in the email? You got all the email responses? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, good. Right. Now, let's see what you can still remember. You'll see that on the screen. Can anybody see the screen? It has a one in the left corner and it says personal selling today. Thumbs up, thumbs down, yes, no. Are we all good, all good, all good, we can see it. <laughs> okay, there's just a delay and I know that it is, it's a, it's a Wednesday afternoon, seventh period kind of vibe that I'm experiencing at the moment. Okay, and again, I'm preaching to the converted because you are in the session. I'm worried about the ones who's not. I know that Londo is still in hospital, but, um, Lack of sleep. What are you doing in the night, um, Tarquin? Or shouldn't I ask? Okay, I can ask, but you don't have to. Assignments. Okay, sorry. My apologies. Anyway, people, you'll see that for the um, revision, I've prepared um, three different slides. Uh, today's will deal with chapter one, two, and three. And that's why the one is there. When you see the two, it is where the summary of chapter two starts and similar with three and all the way through to 10. Right. So in chapter one, we um, covered um, an, an overview of selling as we experience it today. And we said, um, and you did it in business marketing as well, um, a business um, the management of a business favor a specific um, marketing philosophy or marketing orientation. There are a few. Um, we've um, covered most of the, the important ones. Um, and <coughs> that would determine how your sales activities are actually done. 
If your business has a more production orientated philosophy, it means that you are going to be selling very, um, um, uh, very aggressively because you will be very busy because they will only be uh, manufacturing at the maximum capacity that they can. And as a result of that, you will have a lot of stock to sell. Similarly, with um, the sales orientated one where the excess stock that they have, you need to get rid of and therefore a lot of aggressive selling happens. Totally different with your marketing orientated and customer orientated philosophies or um, um, approaches because there the customer becomes more important. Um, and you I just want to get it shown on board as well. Um, the, the approach of the salesperson is yes, still with the intention of making a sale, but also simultaneously trying to establish a very strong long-term relationship with the customer so they can actually satisfy a specific need. In other words, they listen to the customer and they offer the customer what they want and they offer it in the manner that the customer is very, very happy with. Hi, Teresa, welcome. And then um, hopefully convert them into loyal, um, in, into loyal supporters of your product or your brand. Um, the selling cycle, the selling cycle, I think you know by now, um, I think in your assignment, one of the questions um, related to the selling cycle, and you had to go through, um, apply that to that specific um, example of Remax, if I'm correct. Um, but the selling cycle, we have individually, <coughs> my apologies, hay fever and, and a cough. The whole of yesterday and today. There is a what's it with you and your Wi-Fi? Yo, yo, yo. It must be frustrating for you, huh? Let's do the best we can. Fortunately, um, the recordings are uh, done, um, which is not ideal, but at least it's um, as opposed to um, where we were pre-COVID. Um, it would have been challenging because then it would have been work that's lost forever. Um, but let's see how long you can actually stay on board uh, or stay connected um, and we deal with the challenges as they arise. The 10 steps of the selling cycle, you know the 10 steps of the selling cycle, you will always have to know. Um, they're quite straightforward and simple. And we did that when we did an overview a couple of weeks ago as well. <coughs> and the 10 steps we will individually, or you have seen up to this point, we have covered nine of them in through individual chapters. Chapter 11 that we, I think in, that I want, that, that, that we would have been the next chapter that we would have started would have been um, the 10th step, the follow up. We finished with closing the sale in our session on Friday. Okay, so we have looked at all 10 of these steps from pro prospecting all the way through to um, the close of the sale so far. And then obviously we've got one to go in the follow up. Prospecting, you need to find prospects and you need to find them continuously because you're going to lose customers. Some customers are going to be, become unhappy with you. Some customers are just going to move on. Some customers are going to go into a different phase of their life cycle and therefore they don't have a need for your products anymore. Businesses who are successful obviously ensure that they also then expand their business so they can keep the customer by offering him um, the products that they would need in the next cycle or um, in the next life cycle. Um, that's just um, how multi-generational marketing and selling happens. You ensure that you can offer uh, three different generations. If if you are a business who's really successful is a business who can offer and satisfy uh, through the range of products that they offer the needs of three generations under one roof. Your grandfather, you and your children. If your business, if your a business can offer um, and satisfy the needs of all three of those generations uh, under one roof, then the chances that they will be successful um, are very, very good. Prospecting never stops because you'll lose customers. The pre-approach is basically how you, um, <clears throat> the time <coughs> that you prepare for your um, for your sales call, 
uh, the approach is the time between you arriving for the presentation and then actually starting with the presentation. Um, the presentation itself we dealt with in detail, and that could be done in different ways. Um, this first trial close is asking specific questions to prepare the customer. Um, um, when you see that the customer is actually at the point where they are almost ready to make a um, to make a uh, decision. You will be dealing with objections. Um, you will do a final trial close where you ask questions through summarizing what you've done up to that point to ensure that the, that the customer's um, objections have been met. Um, and then basically you ask questions that will lead to the close and ensure um, that once you have concluded the transaction that the customer remains happy and satisfied um <coughs> by following up with it okay yeah yo characteristics of a successful or a under your mic oh sorry sorry guys sorry uh sorry about that no problem whatsoever um, the characteristics of effective salespeople. The Wolf of Wall Street, I believe, was born <laughs> to be in sales. Okay, it's the exception to the rule, but uh, there is no such thing as that you are born a salesperson. You can be made um, a salesperson. We can all sell. Um, and and, and um, through the experiences that you've shared um, up to this point with me on your previous um, attempts at selling stuff. Um, it's it's obviously clear that initially we all struggle because we do not have the confidence, um, and then we become more confident. Um, the first sale that you make is a is a celebration. Okay, hopefully you keep it yourself and you turn it down a bit, uh, so you can do another sale. One, the more you repeat that, um, and we often hear that coaches say. Winning becomes a habit. Um, the more you win, the more you used to come to win. And obviously, um, at some point, you're going to lose. And it's just how you deal with that as well, because that's also nobody just goes undefeated all the time, um, except um, Floyd Mayweather. But then, on the other hand, um, salespeople have certain characteristics that make them more effective than others. Um, effective salespeople are good communicators. They always have a positive attitude. They are always um, glass half full um, rather than half empty people. Um, they will also have bad days, but they will always find the silver lining um, um, to the cloud, to the dark cloud in, in, um, on such a day. They are very good listeners. They are also project um, um, product experts, very knowledgeable about the product that they that they are selling. Not just the product, also the company that they are representing, as well as the in industry in which they are selling in general. They have a very good general idea of what is going and what is trending in the industry that they are in. People that they that um, that we can trust, they are honest. They don't do unethical deals. They don't take bribes. Uh, they don't try and sell somebody something that they know that person cannot afford or that they know that person don't need. Um, very disciplined, very self motivated. Very often because you are not necessarily going to be office bound. Uh, you're going to be on the road. You're going to be seeing prospects. You're going to be um, doing presentations, um, a variety of functions that we um, have addressed in, in, in numerous chapters. Um, <clears throat> but generally, a likable individual that can be trusted, that knows how to um, inform the customer correctly through good communication, which includes specifically the the ability to listen attentively to the customer so they can identify the need correctly. 
and then ensuring that um, they do sufficient proper follow-up um, to establish a long-term relationship with a customer. They are initially focused on making a sale, but they are not fixated on making that sale. They want to also ensure that the customer is happy because they know a happy customer will be a satisfied customer who will come back and who will buy again and buy again and eventually become a loyal supporter. That's the end of summary of what I believe is important in chapter one. I just want to do a check at this stage and see if everybody is fine. Are we all good? Are we all um, on the all same good. page? We're all good. good. It's a nice module, this, eh? Say again? I think it's a nice module, this. It is a module, Andre, I believe, is very Such valuable. I spoke to a lot of other students who um, in the first semester, we had the, um, the HEBs, the students who's doing high certificate in business accounts administration, and uh, your group, the HEMs, who's doing um, um, high certificate in, in business marketing. Um, it was very strange to me that um, only the HEMs um, have sales and um, um, uh, personal selling um, as a second semester module and not the other group, because uh, I do believe that there are some very valuable um, aspects in this module that apply on a much broader base um, on, on other mm. modules and subjects. Um, yeah, that, I agree. And in general life, every day. I mean, I, I tell you what, the first time I read through the curriculum a couple of years ago to get an idea of um, what lies ahead for me, um, I realized that, you know what, um, many of these things we do on a daily basis and we ne we should never forget as salespeople. And I think that's one of, a very important lesson for us to always remember. If you are pursuing a career in sales or considering to enter into a career in sales, you are really equipped for it because before you become, become a salesperson, you're a consumer. You are really buying stuff. Other people are selling to you at the moment. So it, learn from your daily experiences. Um, and I actually said when, to, to my students when I was um, uh, um, uh, training my personal trainers in, 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 um, at, uh, at another college in a couple of years ago, I said, when you go to the gym, because I know you guys are gym bunnies, that's why you're studying personal training. So you can't wait. You probably came from a, um, from a gym session straight into class and you definitely are still thinking about your next training session. And it's great. It's fantastic. But use the opportunity also to, to, to apply what you have, what you're learning in class. Look around, see, apply those things that we, that, that, that we, that we do in, in the course. Um, and then you will see that every time and back to the subject of personal selling, Every, if you have that approach um, and you take the knowledge that you have now up to this point, you will go shopping with a whole different, with a whole different mindset now. Um, because you will be looking, is that guy doing it? Is he doing this? Is he doing that? Because you've been told what concept is important. Is he actually listening to me or is he actually um, sort of um, glancing on his phone occasionally to see if uh, a message has, the phone, the phone is on silent, but he's still glancing and see if a message hasn't come through. That person is not paying attention to you regardless of what he's saying. Okay, so very often we are now evaluating the people that are selling to us if they are meeting the minimum criteria that's expected of, um, of a good salesperson or not. So yeah, we do, um, I think, have lots of opportunities in our daily lives to, to apply what we actually um, what we actually do in, in, in a course. Right. Um, what are we doing for time? When's this session finished? Um, well, where am I now? Um, we've done quarter past one, I think. Um, so what? Maybe I'm pretty sure we'll be, we'll, we'll be able to knock off slightly earlier today. I don't think that any of you would mind. Do you mind if we finish a couple of minutes earlier today? I'm okay, but I think Tarkin would like to do a full session. 
I know, I know. He said How could you love to be... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, only because he's using these opportunities to actually catch a, <laughs> catch a shut eye. <laughs> because he's, <laughs> he's doing his time in the middle of the night, so he knows, oh, double period sales. I can actually, oh, maybe I can actually get a power snooze in. Um, <laughs> joking. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I know that um, I know that you won't do that. Um, but I also understand if you do. <laughs> um, chapter two. <laughs> nah, it's not that bad. Um, chapter two. Let's see. <laughs> uh, thanks, Teresa. Um, One of the crucial elements of success in sales is to be able to identify the needs of the customer correctly. If you mess up, yeah, you're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of effort. You're going to become very frustrated. You're going to hate yourself later on. And you're going to, oh, my goodness, um, why didn't this person say early on that they, no, 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 no. Why don't you do proper planning? Because then you would not unnecessarily qualify a lead incorrectly and end up doing a presentation to them, but they wouldn't have bought it in the first place anyway. Okay, so a lot of preparation goes into this um, step of preparing. This is, this is part of the prospecting component. <coughs> <clears throat> my apologies, of the prospecting step. Plan, 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 plan. Very important. That's why you have to be knowledgeable about the product because you have to know every feature that the product offers. You don't want the customer to say, oh, oh yes, and what about that? Oh, shucks, you didn't even know this, that your product had that feature. Mm -mm. You're on a losing, you're on a starting a losing streak if that's the case. Know your product, know the features of the product, but more importantly, know what that feature, what the advantage of that feature is. In other words, like the example we have on the screen, if the feature is ABS brakes, it means that the car can start quicker and safer. So what's the benefit? The benefit for you to buy this car with ABS brakes means that you are going to be in a much safer car. Jeez, you're looking after your family and everybody that, that, that's, that's passengers with you. Know the feature. And the reason why you, know you need to know the feature is because the customer knows it too. It's the 21st century. They will Google the stuff. They will come prepared. You can't tell them to say, I mean, this and this and this. They know that already. 90% of them come prepared. Why wouldn't you also prepare? Show of disrespect if you are unprepared, but the customer walks in there prepared. Mm -mm. Rookie mistake. Know the features. Know what they can do. Know what, what the advantages of that specific feature. But more importantly than what I've just said now is ensure that then you can align that with the need that the customer have because then you are selling the benefit. So why would you want to buy this cell phone? Why would you want to buy that? Because the benefit that you can experience if you have this is the A, B, C, D, and E. That is most important because that indicates to the customer that you've listened to what they what their problem is you're offering them a solution to their problem because you've listened if you listen you would highlight the benefit understand the difference between features advantages and benefits of a product it is important when you're preparing for your sales presentation or approach right factors that can influence the buying behavior oh there are so many there are so many that can influence your buying decision. But let's just finish this off. If we go slightly beyond quarter past one to finish this off, um, we'll immediately break after that because 
we only have um, a few slides left, about half the slides left um, on chapter three, which is on communication. Uh, and we'll start that straight after the break. But to finish chapter two, it's important to look at the factors that influence the buying behavior. Remember those um, still from first semester, um, business marketing, um, there are five steps in the decision-making process. Recognize or identify the problem, gather information, evaluate information, make a decision based on the criteria that you've set, um, uh, and, and buy a product that best suits your criteria. Um, and then see, do the post-purchase um, evaluation and see if you're happy or not. Those are the five steps that you go through. Now, these factors that you see on the screen are the factors that influence how that those five steps are actually done. Okay, let's keep in mind the five steps in the back of our mind because that's the buying decision making, the, the customer's um, buying decision making process. Um, and then we apply these influencing factors to those five steps. A, family. The phase that a family member are in, especially the decision maker, the person who's going to pay for the um, for the for the purchase, that specific um, role player's role in the family, where that person finds himself. If the person carrying the wallet who's going to make the final decision to buy it or not is a 25 year old um, <coughs> you know, individual. Um, the way that they will make a decision and the fact the the, um, the the phase in which they find themselves most probably still single and ready to mingle, um, they will have um, they won't have to consult other people and consider other people when they make a decision to um, to buy. If you are 45 years old and you have two children um, who are in primary school, then obviously there are other influencing factors because you as the final um, payer in the whole uh, transaction um, have to consider other factors and obviously that would be your children and your family. So you're in a different phase of your, um, of your life cycle. Social class, what you do, what's your occupation, what's your income, what's your level of um, education, all of those, not just your income people, very often social class is is um is cat people are categorizing social classes and different social classes based on the income but there are other important um factors like education and the type of job that you do um that also influences your social status demographics like age and gender and nationality those are all again influencing factors um age we sort of touched on um in in family very much um, interlinked in that regard. Your lifestyle, your personal values. In other words, those things that your psychographic um, influences um, refer to. Your own psychological makeup, your own self-concept, how you see yourself, how you would want others to see you, how you would actually prefer to be, um, to be um, perceived by other people. Your image, those are all <coughs> things that um, influence your buying decision. Your own personality um, or characteristics, like uh, are you an aggressive person, are you a passive person, are you um, um, easygoing individual, that influences how you make your decisions. And so the cultures that you are born into, you have to sometimes adhere to certain practices and beliefs and rituals, um, and those all, in combination, not just family, not just social class, all six that you see on the screen. In combination, some in some stages of your life uh, have a greater influence um, on your buying decision, um, and and others would in a different um, stage of your life. But they will never, one will never disappear. If you are not, um, if you don't have a family yet, then your family, your parents, and your brothers and sisters will have an influence on your decision or would be people that you will consult before you make a decision. Once you are up, have your own family, then you have to consult your own children and your wife um, and um, your husband and um, alternatively also still your parents. They haven't gone away. You will still use them as, as some form of reference. 
So these factors are all very important in how we make decisions as a customer. You as the salesperson need to know that these are the factors that influence the buying decision. And you sometimes work through a family member um, and direct maybe a question or pull a family member in to assist um, um, the, the, the potential customer to, to make a decision. So you've got to understand the dynamics. That's part of the planning. Understand the dynamics of a particular individual that you're trying to sell to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've used more than my 5,000 words for, for the morning. So I'm going to take a short break. In the break, I'm quickly going to um, just glance and see what chapters uh, you have to cover and prepare for the class test tomorrow. And I'll briefly just explain to you what the class test is about and what format you can expect it to be in. Right, all good. Can we take a five minute break and we resume, let's say, 20 past? Cool, thanks, Joko. Okay, see you just now.